All right, let's get cracking. We've got the beautiful, beautiful Zona Veil Drain set here. So let's get. Here. All right. Let's see what we can get. I did two pre releases today. Uh, didn't get anything too crazy. I did get this nice box here. Try to try my darndest to keep in frame. All right. Let's get out. go. Alright, let's get to it. I don't know how I feel about these pull tabs. Kind of like them, kind of don't. We'll see. I definitely am not a giant fan of the order. Alright, so we got a nice little dwarf token. Just swampy. Got the Oath Sworn Knight. Where's the focus? Well, you can see it. Trail crumbs. Bring your trainer. Let's see if you got anything crazy in the comments. No. So apparently, and I didn't realize this because I thought, you know, hey, they have the special stuff in the collector's edition. Because they want you to buy the collectors or the collector packs or whatever they are. But apparently you can get the crazy border stuff in other sets. Alright, so we got board token, got mountain, got our first foil, got the weapon rack. That is a common foil. I should move that there so I have room for my mythics. I'll leave a space for Mythics. Okay. Got the Stormfist Crusader. See that alright? So highlight the rares. Miss Venerable Savvy. Anything crazy. In the commons. Nope. So uh, I did a two-headed giant for the uh, second part of the pre-release. And, uh, yeah, ended up, my partner got the Borderless Garrick. I only ended up with one, uh, one of the storybook frames for the, uh, the Shieldbreaker lady, which I was happy with, because that was a gorgeous, gorgeous card. All right, we got our first mythic. We got the Embercleave. Uh, where is the focus? Is it all the way over here? Is it here? Is it here? There it is. All right. This is a great, great video so far. <laughs> uh, by the time I do my next box, I'll have the sound pad. Alright, so I kind of like the pull tabs. It seems like they put them in. Oh, there we are. There we are indeed. Look at that. That is a nice foily storybook frame giant killer rare. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I am so happy right now. And I got a mythic questing beast. Look at that. That is beast. That was a hell of a pack. A hell of a pack. Uh, anything crazy, you know, because that wasn't good enough, apparently. Jesus, that is a, that is a gorgeous card. If that was in frame, you would be just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, um, I'm going to pause the video. I need to take a quick phone call, and I will be back momentarily. All right, and we're back. And I made a decision. I'm going to move my piles slightly. So I'm going to bring, keep the tokens. 
the basic lands in here. I'm gonna move the the commons next to the lands. Bring the uncommons here. Rares there, mythics there. And then I'll have my foilies down below there. Respectively. That way the yeah, so the mythics are more in view. Alright. Sorry. Had to make a quick call. Okay. Moving on. Let's see here. The on adventure token and lands. Okay, so I got the Iron Craig Pyromancer. Nothing crazy in the Uncommon slot, nothing crazy in the common slot. Moving on. Got a food token, mountain. The Clack Bridge Troll. That is, I'm gonna, I need, I'm pausing that card in the pre-release was just hot garbage every time it was played every time it was played um so the way it works when you put it on the field target opponent gets three zero one white goat creatures at the beginning of combat on my turn any opponent may sacrifice a creature if that player does this gets tapped in addition I gain three life and draw a card. That's ridiculous. And it's an 8-8 eight, eight trample haste. So those goats aren't long for the world. They're going to be the next three turns of them sacrificing those damn goats to keep that... But you're gaining nine life and drawing three cards guaranteed. Because there's no way they're not sacrificing those goats. And it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. So even if you're playing red, you better have like four burn spells in hand. Because you're going to need them. Like, oh my gosh. The only like counter really is bake into pie. If someone plays a counter spell. And I think that's it. I don't think there's any just straight destroy target creature. I guess Garouk's uh, second ability. But still, like, it just dominated as soon as it hit the board. One of my opponents had two, and I just could not deal with it. It was, yeah. Too many effects. Too many effects. It, you, you should be able to trap, tap it. You shouldn't get the, the life and the card draw. Maybe the card draw, but definitely not the life. That made it ridiculous. All right, moving on. Black Lance Paladin, some regular uncommons, and some regular commons. Okay. Got human token, swamp. The tokens are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the tokens. They really did a good job with the tokens. Um, as far as giving us not just you know some basic token whatever but having actual like good artwork on it it's their full art which I love because you know it's like there's no reason not to have them full art look at that gorgeous mouse look at that gorgeous mouse Alan all right got our next foily got a fireborn knight uh, he's really good as well oh I got the once upon a time not get the foil one though. Um, the last people that we played against in the the two headed, they had gotten the uh, that was their promo was the once upon a time. So all right, got the Castle Vantress. That's that's one of the better castles because you can consistently um, you can consistently scry off of it. 
the one I got in my first game was I got two of the castle, the green ones, so the castle Embarth or something like that. Uh, I didn't, you know, for pre-release it was fine because there were turns where I'd, I'd burn, I'd draw land and would have no, I got Foily Malevolent Noble there and the Witch Claw Talisman. Ooh, got a, a, a storyboard frame. Well, I'm not going to put that with the, the foils since they're actually more rare than the foils. Um, but the, the green land, it just, you pay four and you get one, one, one white human token. It's not even a knight, so you can't even use it for knight tribal. It's, yeah. Like, there was a game where I ended up with two of them and I lost that game even though I had them. Because, you know, it's just not that powerful an effect. I don't know. Maybe if it costs less, it would be better. Like, if it was two. Because, you know, it really costs five. You're paying five to get a 1-1 one, one vanilla human token. Like, alright. Like I said, like, I had nothing else to do with the mana. I was top decking lands. Ooh, got a nice looking love struck beast. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. So, I'm curious to see how many the special frame stuff I'll get um, compared to how many foils I get. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a one-to-one -one or if it'll be more foils or more of the special frames. Um, Alright, got our foil land. Got the acclaimed contender. Nothing too crazy there. This car. We're going to talk about this car in a second. So this is the Brimstone Trebuchet. And I'm going to be putting them in all of my red decks. This card and the two-headed giant was ridiculous. Because it's tap, deal a damage to each opponent. So that's two opponents. So they each take a damage, which means they basically just take two. We had, I had another card that said, red sources I control deal an extra two damage whenever they deal any damage to a permanent or a player, which is absolutely ridiculous. He costs four. And yeah, it's triple red, but if you pull him and you're, if you're doing, um, ooh, got the nice animating fairies. Um, if you pull him and you're doing pre-release, you're playing Mono Red. He, what he says is, for this pre-release, you play Mono Red. And then in addition to that, you get the other stuff. That's realistically what he says. You'd be crazy to not play him. You'd be crazy to risk not being able to play him by splashing any other color. Like, so all your red creatures now attacking for extra... It's just, that won the game. Oh, Yorvo. <sighs> Yorvo was consistently a problem. We actually won both the games that he came out in, but he's just very strong. Very, very strong. Um, he got very big, very, very, very fast. Um, so we're about halfway through. We're at... Oh no, what's happened? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I had to talk about a thing, so let's see. Did we get anything for that back? Oh man, that's embarrassing. Um, Alright, so we got a foil rare, a foil story frame rare, a story frame rare, two story frame uncommons, a foil uncommon, two foil commons. So, storyboard versus foil, it's, it's equaling that, which makes me, I guess, kind of upset if that ends up being how most of these boxes are going to go. Just because, you know, I, like, I, I want something to be a little bit more rare. The flashier stuff, you know, which is Vengeance. It'd be nice if they could be a little bit more rare, a little bit more difficult to get to. Um... 
Because I, like I said, I thought they were just going to have those in the collector's box, and that was it. That was going to be the only place you could get those, which would have been, which would have jacked the, the value of them up. So if you bought the, if you got the pack as the buy a box, if your local gaming store was doing that, I got a foil Lucky Clover. Castle Garenbrig, that was the castle. Um, ooh, got a nice storyboard frame Order of Midnight. Um, you know, if you're... If you got that, then that was that was just money, money in the wallet, and it would justify the ridiculous price if you were just buying the collector's packs. But because they're in regular boxes and they print the hell out of these regular boxes, the value over time is just going to drop significantly. Stolen by the Fay. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm not getting a ton of them and. The foil ones, at least, are going to be the big dollar items, but you're not guaranteed the foil ones either from the collector's pack, so I feel like that kind of negates that. Castle and Earth. Curious how many castles I'll end up with. I'll, have, I'll get the whole set, sort of like the... Uh, a lot of boxes of the Core 20 have the full ley line set in them, or at least most of it. Modern Horizons had pretty consistently most of the uh, Horizon Lands. Alright, got a foil Arden Veil Paladin. A little off camera there. Bone Crusher Giant. This is my rare. Something special. Nope. Almost down to the last stack. And with the pull tab, sometimes it pulls just a snippet out, sometimes it goes all the way down. It's just toss up. Alright, so we got the Sorcerer's Spyglass. Crazy there. I will say, this set more than any other set makes me actually like look at the freaking commons that I'm getting. Other than maybe the uh, core point with that one common, that's worth like a crazy amount of money. Wicked Wolf. I haven't gotten any common storybook frames. So I want. I feel like as many uncommon and the two rares that I've gotten like that, I should have a common at this point. I got a. Foil Blood Haze Wolverine. Torbrand. That's the guy. That's the guy right there. That's the guy. Where source deals red source deals damage to an opponent. It deals that much damage plus two. That so spoiler alert, I'm a commander player. I'ma make a red deck. I'ma make a red deck that has him as the commander. And it's just going to mop the floor. It's just going to be dealing so much damage. It's going to be doing all sorts of crazy things. Sorry, I'm trying to get as much on camera as I can. It's just going to, it's just going to be vicious. Alright, Doom Foretold. Nothing crazy there. Nothing crazy in there. Um, I I love this set. I will probably buy at least one more box, if not two more boxes of this, of this, just because I just love the look. It's gorgeous. There's Lyndon the Steadfast Queen, uh, another Fireborn Knight. Just the the art and the flavor is just so wonderful. So I'm at two Mythics so far still. So that's not, it's not making me feel good. I would like more Mythics. Because I feel like the value from this set, it's going to be predominantly in the storyboard and the extended art and the borderless cards. Um, with any residual value ending up in the uh, Mythic slot. I think there's some potential with some of the commons that they printed, like that trebuchet. 
to really jack up in price just because of the the value and utility of them. Um, got a shine, sh shiny shine chaser. She chased herself into being shiny. Got a worthy knight there. Let's see if we get anything else. It's been a while since we got anything crazy. Um... But yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how the, the value of this set goes. Because I think with the standard rotation, I feel like a lot of eyes are going to be on this set to kind of make up for what's been lost. So there's Gadwick the Wizened. Um, so I feel like there's going to be a lot of focus on this. We'll see. We'll see how it shakes up. I like I said, I'm liking this set. Yeah, I had a blast doing the pre-release folio of fancies. Um, that's actually very useful. There's, I have at least three commander decks that need that in it. I have a Nekuzar deck that's just built around uh, making everybody draw cards and people taking damage for that. So if I can get that X cost to be a lot easier to manage, because that's, well, I mean, I guess it's still like getting, like, I'll have, can consistently get to, like, five or six mana for that deck. Mantle of Tides and Foil. The Gilded Goose. It's been a bit since we got anything spicy. Still sitting at two mythics. Um, at least got a foil rare. I bought the worst, and I mean the worst box of War of the Spark ever. It it was a rough one. It was a really rough run. I got two mythics. They weren't particularly good. Did not get a foil rare or a foil mythic before you ask. It was ridiculous. All right, so we got our token, got our land. There's a mythic. There's the magic mirror. That one's going to see some play. That one is definitely going to see some play. Costs one less for each instant sorcery and graveyard. You have no maximum hand size. And at the beginning of the year, keep a knowledge counter on it and then draw a card for each knowledge counter on it. Pretty straightforward, you get it out, and then, boom, nothing but, uh, nothing but draws. That would, it's a little pricey for Nekuzar. Crafix might benefit from that, though. Um, so you get such high mana, that'd be something to use that mana on. Let's see here, so we got a f another foil rare. This time, not a storybook frame, so it's the Bone Crusher Giant. And then we got the Midnight Clock. So what I'm most curious about. So they got the storybook frames. And it's neat and all. But moving forward, what are they going to do? You know? So are they going to somehow work the storybook thing into another set. Because I think it's been pretty... It's Fable Passage. I think it's been pretty... Uh, pretty well received, the storybook frame. It looks gorgeous. Um, you know, because... I think, I think that's the next step. Instead of foiling your deck, you're going to, like, get the special frames for your deck. And it doesn't even have to be a foil. Because not a lot of people like the foils, you know, they can't use them in all the tournaments. There's a Charming Prince. There's a gorgeous Okam Ranger. Look at that. That is just fantastic. The art is beautiful. The cards are good. They have nice, consistent, like, like look at this little ginger brute. Look at this little guy. He's a, He's got haste. He's a 1-1. One, one. He costs 1. And you can tap another one, and he can't be blocked except by creatures with haste. That's a weird mechanic you don't see a lot. And then you can tap two and sack him and gain three life, just like a food. So, it's pretty good. Uh, 
All right, last pack, last chance for that special frame. Oh my God, in the close, the great henge, the greatest of henges. Oh my gosh, I am so happy with that. That was my uh, extended art that I got from the uh, collector's pack that I already opened off camera. Um, show that off at least, comparison. So that's the difference. You got the extended art on the left, you got the regular art on the right. Oh, I'm glad I got two. That's going in a deck for sure. All right, so that was that box. Um, and chat, I guess. Yeah, I guess I can show a couple. I'll just real quick show a couple of the other flashier stuff I got out of that box. Um, so I got the foil flex and intruder. And then I got the foil Gadwick the Wizened. Let's add that to this. Going into my binder anyway. So, yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.